put a four there just before I forgot to edit stuff. We're going to talk about different types of design methodologies. We're actually not going to work a design problem. We'll do that actually next class. We're going to talk about how to kickstart your capstone project. Ooh, ooh, that could have lasting impact. And then we're going to attempt to identify an ethical standard. Sound like a fair thing to do? Once again, four hours of work, we'll pack it into a much more shorter period of time. Does this seem familiar? You guys remember this? Yes. Man, you know, I think last time we had a story. But, you know, darn thing, I can't remember how that story goes. Can you tell me how the story starts? What was the first thing that happened in the story? IDs and the toes. What was the second thing that happened in the story? Ow, that has to be painful. What was the third thing that happened in the story? Ouch, ouch, there's physical pain there. What was the fourth thing that happened in the story? Ah, yeah, what was it shooting? Little C's, big C's, all sorts of that. How about the fifth thing that, oh, you weren't here, were you? This is all a mystery to you. Yeah, talk about How about you, sir? What was the, what happened after the tennis ball cannon? Uh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, she's got dogs coming after her, too. That's a problem yeah. right there. Yeah. Mr. Hagui, what happened after Lady Gaga? I don't know. Help him out here. Lego. Thank you very much. Right, okay. Can you see it? Can you picture it? All right, there we go. That's it. In the corner, sir, what happened after the Lego butt thing? The Lego butt, the uh, spine. And what's on the spine? Oh, uh, outlets. Outlets, and what's happening to them? What's going on with those outlets right now? What's somebody doing? Plugging in cords. That's what you do, right. Mr. It begins with a no because it's Spanish, and that's a whole brand new thing for me right there, sir. What happened after that? Oh, no, a student taking the test. That's right. How's that going for him? Gotcha, exactly. So now we're on the face, sir. What's happening on the face? Little baby on the thunder. Little baby, that's fabulous. Little baby comes out and tell me what happens then. You grab away. By, by like a dragon or something like that, or what? What's taking the baby away? <laughs> it's like a it's like a stork. Right in every cartoon you ever saw when you're growing up. And Ms. Lee, what, what happened after that? What's the last thing in our story? Tools! And they're what? Are they just laying there? They're flying out of your what? Out of your head, right? You're like a Lowe's walking around with stuff popping out of your head. Fantastic, and somehow that all relates to this design process, right? Well, that's not bad, guys. It's been a while and it's still stuck in your head. Ooh, we've done a fabulous work here. Yeah. space of my memory. Good luck with that, yeah. <laughs> when you're taking a final exam and you can just imagine somebody with tools flying out of their head, that's my fault. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, and once again, this is sort of a big picture. This is every component that could go into an engineering design process. And that's really why we went over it. Right now it's stuck in your head. What I wanted to do today was spend a little bit of time talking about other design processes, because this isn't the only one. Remember, this is actually a pretty simple one, right? You start here, go through all the steps of how you drop out in the end, which is a great way to do things. It's not always necessarily the best way to do it. And as you go out in the real world, as you work for different companies, they may have different design methodologies. It's all based on this. This is where you start. It's sort of your master plan. Depending on what types of products you're doing, depending on what type of industry you're in, you may change it up. You may have an optimized design process. But it starts here. So one of the first ones is something called the waterfall. Okay? What's nice about the waterfall is you already started to know what this is. Waterfall is pretty simple. You start here, go here, go here, go here, and you drop out at the other end. Okay? So it's actually pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, a lot of people like to make fun of the waterfall design process. They consider it to be old. They consider it to be out of date. They like talking about new, cool, hip design methodologies. What they forget is that the waterfall design process is actually really good at what it does. It basically gives you a sort of a guaranteed output, right? And if you were the person who owned the business, right, and if everybody is working for you, would you want to have a bunch of fantastic artists who are sitting down every day and coming up with great new designs? Or would you want to be reasonably confident that at the end of the month you'd have a product to go sell, right? That's the promise of the waterfall methodology. If you're starting here, and next week you're 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 here, you know basically when you're going to be done. You know basically how much it's going to cost, right? So waterfall is not the right design methodology to use if you're looking for fantastic new ideas, great creativity. But if you're cranking out version 4.0 or 5.0 or 6.0 of a product, 
it's actually really a pretty good methodology to use. And especially if you're a manager, you know, if you've got people working for you and your career depends on having that product out when it's supposed to be out, this is a good one. Because when your boss comes to you and says, hey, how are we doing? You can tell them exactly where you're at. And more importantly, you can tell them when you're going to be done. So let's think about this for a brief moment. If you were using the waterfall methodology, what would life look like? Okay? So this is the start of the project. You can see that it's research, concept, design, test, build, release, you know, basically all the, all the stages there. What's going to happen here, we're going to consider this to be your design debt, which is basically ideas. you got new ideas, new ways of solving. You're thinking, 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 thinking. So you're coming up with a whole bunch of really cool ideas, and then you hit the test phase. At that point in time, you start testing your ideas. And some of them are just really bad ideas. You shouldn't have had them. Oh, but that's fine. You replace those ideas with some brand new ideas. And then eventually, you hit the build phase. Hey, this is where you commit, right? You actually make whatever you're making, and then you go through the release phase. Oh, great. Fabulous. I mean, that's how design's done, right? The problem, if, if we call it a problem, is something called waste. And it's like idea waste. And you guys have all experienced this. You know, you're working on something, you're going along, and you start having ideas how you could do it better, right? Oh, if only. If you've ever done woodworking, you know exactly what this feels like. Right after you've cut it, you go, oh, wait, <laughs> maybe I could have done something else. Who's done our capstone projects? Gentleman in the back, and somebody else has done a capstone project also. So as you guys got farther into that, did you start to have insights on how you could have done it a little differently? A little better, a little different, whatever. You know, in the world of technology, you know, new technologies become available, right? So those tablets right now have, what, seven and a half inch screens and stuff like that? Well, 10 inch screens are becoming available. You might come up with a better battery source or a battery that lasts for a longer time. You know, all that comes potentially too late in the process. Waterfall methodology isn't set up to allow you to have your ideas that you have later on or new technologies get worked into it. Remember, it's got some really great attributes to it. You're going to start here, you're going to get here, and you're going to finish here. Fantastic. That's great. But it's not really great at allowing you to have great new insights happen as you go through. All right. A different type of design methodology is called the Agile design methodology. If you pick up pretty much any trade journal these days, they're all going to be about Agile. It is a uh, not just a design methodology, but in some cases it's a religion. All right, so people have really flocked to this. They really love it. They really love it because what they did for a long time was waterfall. All right, and so agile is actually a pretty simple concept. So research, concept, fantastic. Okay, so I've got some concepts. I've got some ways I'd like to go about designing this particular product. Okay, and then you do test, design, build, design, build, design, build. What you do is you get into a circle there. Okay? And you're trying out new ideas. You're implementing it in the product and you're checking to see if they're actually working. Agile comes from the waterfall process. I mean, it didn't just drop it from outer space. It was derived from the waterfall methodology. And the reason it was done this way was primarily because people were doing a lousy job of coming up with requirements. So, you know, at, magically at the beginning of a project, somebody's not going to know everything that has to be done. And what they discovered was what we really need to do is have a way to go back and incorporate what we've learned as we're going through before we basically pour the concrete. Okay? What's nice about this is that you start to move through your backlog of ideas and you can actually change direction as needed. When you're using the agile design type, what's going to happen is you're going to build up that same backlog of ideas, but it's really going to occur in what's called iteration zero. Because what happens is you start off to the left here, just like you did in the waterfall design, and you go ahead and you do your first iteration, you do your first design. At the same point in time, you're going to be having a lot of great ideas, new technologies are going to be coming along, all this sort of new opportunities going to be showing up that you're not going to be able to incorporate into your initial design. But in Agile, what happens is after you get the first design done, you sort of reset the clock and you go back and you basically do the design over but you're incorporating into that design everything that you've learned and what this means is that you have an opportunity to bring in those great new ideas because you're doing the design and build over you can start to move that through that backlog of ideas that you've been able to build up and effectively what this means is that you're going to be able to get your best ideas into your design and over time what's going to happen is you're going to be able to reduce your design waste 
Now, the next type of design process that we want to talk about is called lean. And in a lean design process, this is the type of approach that you want to use when you're <laughs> dealing with a design challenge that has a great deal of critical uncertainty to it. In other words, you really don't know what the final product and outcome is supposed to look like. Okay, you're trying to do something that is brand new. Now, this isn't really something that you're going to do long periods of research and concept development on, uh, but you're going to do a consistent iterative approach. You're going to build, you're going to measure, and you're going to learn. Okay, <laughs> in my life, I've seen this. Uh, I, this is how I do woodwork. Okay, so I'll do some measurements. I'll go back, do some cutting, take it back. It turns out it won't fit. I'll go back, do some some more cutting, go back, still doesn't fit, and etc. 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 Now let's take a look at an actual lean uh, project. And what you see over here is that we start on the far left once again. And what we'll actually do is we'll we'll do some building. Okay, we'll take it up. But what we're going to do is we're only going to build up enough ideas so that we can get something out. The concept behind Lean is to get a product or a result out as quickly as possible. Okay? What happens then is that we'll go on to our next cycle. And because we're doing it this way, we're never really going to build up a backlog of ideas. We're only going to be creating enough ideas to move forward. So you're not really going to have the same idea debt that, uh, backlog that you see in a lot of the other design approaches. So there you go. We have three different approaches. We've got waterfall, uh, we've got uh, the agile, and we've got the lean approaches. So let's take a look and see how they stack up to each other. Okay, the waterfall approach, when you take a look at it here, it's going to have less of an innovative impact on the world. You're not going to change the world if you're using the waterfall approach. But really, that's not what it's designed to do. Instead, with the waterfall, you're pretty sure that you're going to get what you need. With a waterfall, you also you're going to get it when you need it. So you can really understand that waterfall has a great deal of appeal if you're running a company, right? Uh, because you pretty much know what you're going to get and when you're going to get it. During the waterfall process, some good ideas are going to have to go by the wayside. Okay, that that waste is going to be fairly high, relatively speaking, for the waterfall process because once you commit, you're really only moving forward. You're not really taking steps backwards. Now, Agile is going to be a little bit differently. It's going to help when your outcomes are not completely spelled out generally by your customers. The design is going to be better validated by your customer because they will have been able to see previous versions. And when they see previous versions, that gives them an opportunity to offer change suggestions. Now, you're going to be able to move through your backlog of good ideas. Okay, And finally, we come to the Lean process. Now, Lean's going to allow you to get a lot more good ideas worked into your product. And because you're going to have very few ideas uh, ending up in the waste bucket, um, you're going to have very little spoilage. Most of your ideas are actually going to make it into, into your design. The interesting thing is that on both Agile and Lean, you're not going to have as much control over when the project is actually going to wrap up. And that can be a huge deal if you are uh, have a... a, a time that it has to be delivered by or if there's a, a specific cost target that you have to stick with. Uh, they'll arguably produce a better product but you won't have as much control over when it actually shows up. So let's talk about using some of these in, in, in an actual real world situation such as an embedded system. Now embedded systems are what we see in things like for example cameras or DVD players or uh, things along those lines. These are relatively complex devices okay and they uh, embedded systems are, really are combined hardware and software systems and that they, they may be embedded into an even larger system and they perform a dedicated application specific type of operation okay uh, once again DVD players automobiles digital cameras those are really great examples of this uh, when you're working on an embedded system you can see on this particular chart here basically you've got three things that you're gonna have to worry about you're gonna have to worry about the software design you have to worry about the interface design, and you're gonna have to worry about the hardware design. Okay. Uh, effectively, what you're gonna end up <laughs> doing here, the one of the key issues that you're gonna have to worry about is what are called performance issues. Okay. And you're gonna do lots of trade-offs between what part of the design you do in software versus what type of portion of the design you do in hardware. And it's really gonna come down to a lot of performance issues. Okay. The designers are gonna end up having to partition the task between the software and hardware systems in order to achieve optimal system performance.